Hey guys, pretty usual everything on this channel is for educational purposes and not intended as financial advice. So we had a new all-time high today, and I constantly think of this tweet by Barry, the King Barry Silbert, about the flywheel effect, that as we see a higher price, we're just going to see bigger and better things just based on the ability for a large market cap to absorb certain unmarket events and certain things. Another thing I've noticed, if you've been following me on Twitter, you, you'll know I've posted every single Bitcoin article from the mainstream media that I could find. Whether or not it's good or a bad article, that doesn't matter to me. The point is, you can clearly see there's a giant uptick in articles all around the world, so there's that as well. If we look at market cap total sitting at 102 billion, pretty insane. I can't even remember the last, like in 2013, what that market cap was. If somebody knows that information, let me know in the comments below. But Ethereum did overtake Ripple, so I'm going to do top three today in this video. We'll start with Bitcoin. Uh, and if you look on the monthly, you can see just by comparison that there haven't been many months over months like there are here that look anything like this. Very quickly you can see, you know, here, here, stuff like this. Even in at the end of 2013, uh, you know, when all was said and done, we get this giant month of buying, exhaustion, whatever. So there's that. A lot of people have been, been, been comparing uh, fractals. That's fine. I don't really think it matters in the end. No, Nobody will know where the price is. There are ways that we will calculate resistance targets, but in the end, you kind of just have to hold and wait. If we look at the uh, weekly... Again, you can see not many weeks look like these eight or nine weeks have here. Again, 2013, twice. What a year that was, 2013. You know, we could get that again easily. You just copy this fractal, paste it over here. Let's do it. Buying kind of stops around, uh, it would probably stop around August based on the UASF, which should be a massive market event that will just obliterate price, I'm guessing just like $1,500 down day, something like that. Just insane. I'm talking insane. Uh, so expect that. Just have a plan for that. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if it does, at least you'll know what you're going to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go to half half cash, most likely, uh, cold storage, everything, uh, just to not get super wrecked by that. <laughs> Should we not recover from that? Uh, you know, people with large holdings have to be thinking, do you just hold through that and hope for the best? Or... Do you sort of take some risk off the table there? And that's why I think part of the selling is going to be large holders taking some risk off the table. And a lot of people are going to disagree with me with that on that. That's fine. You know, if you're a holder that you're going to hold till 20 years from now, whatever, great. This whole thing is going to be a blip compared to what 20 years is going to be. But in the near term, on August 1st, there's going to be some issues, I think. Okay, so back to the technicals. One thing everyone was worried about is this week over week uh, tweezer top ish thing. Again, we've never recovered from a weekly candle like this ever. So if you're not all in now, now's a good time for that. <laughs> uh, look at this wick. Look at every other wick like this. We've never recovered this quickly ever. It's always been a series of uh, long consolidation. Whether it be here, uh, this was a tweezer top, you know, all this consolidation, even these smaller market events, PBOC, ETF, whatever, tweezer top, you know, this took years to get back to. Uh, this wick took a few months to get above. Point is, we're there next week, yesterday, whatever, tomorrow. We're already back to all-time highs again. So that just tells me there's insane demand, insane bullish momentum. Just pushing this higher and higher. If you go to the pitchfork, you can see it's somewhat useless at this point. Clearly way above that. Uh, there's no fork that really fits any of this. It's moving really quickly. You can probably fork something on a low, low time frame, but I'm not really going to bother. When this does pull back, expect it to reach for the median line. If that means it's the bottom of a $1,000 wick, I'm telling you, I don't know when, but it's going to hit that median line again. It doesn't hold this median line for this many years only to never ever come back to it it's going to come back i don't know when call it call it call me a fud monger that's fine based on the technicals it's going to come back to the median line take that for what you will but bids there wouldn't be a terrible idea now if we go to targets for a new all-time high 
we'll get to FIV extensions, but these are monthly pivots. We've surpassed the yearly pivots, the R5 yearly pivot, passed it already with this uh, new all-time high. It's not an all-time high on index, actually, but it is on Coinbase. So these are the monthly pivots, and you can just see, you know, below 3,000, above 34, around 42, etc. So those are some levels to watch. These would be passed probably rather quickly, considering they're only a few hundred dollars apart from each other. That's why I really like yearly pivots. Something else, else I've been watching, and I don't really know or understand enough about RSI to comment on. Uh, I know this was a hidden hidden bull div. You can see we have a lower high, uh, excuse me, a higher low and a lower low in RSI. That just means it took more momentum to get price down less far. So the market absorbed all that bearish momentum and that should have signaled us going higher and it did. Great. Okay, this other thing I'm watching is this bear div, which continues should we make a higher high here, which we have on Coinbase. Uh, so if price doesn't keep going much further to break this div, that's just more evidence to watch for another pullback, not a giant pullback, but these three, Bitcoin lately, past couple months, really likes these three big down days after uh, a bear div. So really after this first, uh, can this type of candle, uh, again, would signal two or three more down days followed after that. If we go to Coinbase, this is four hour. You can see new all time high, great. Hit the R1. Uh, monthly, great. Uh, these are just against more fibs, 3k, 34, 36, 39, kind of meaningless until we sort of fill in some market structure up here. I would pay more attention to the monthly pivots, so 3600 is going to be the next target, about 800, 900 bucks up from here. If we go to cloud, uh, so I'm going to run through this. It's retrospective, but, but I've said it hopefully enough where you can trust that this is what you should be looking for anyway. So on the daily, Cloud had you get in middle May and never get out. Okay, that's fine. I think watching it on the watching it on the daily cloud isn't going to help you too much because when you do get these down days, it kind of erases the entry. So the entry was here, and then you get all these down days before the TK cross. So entry, exit, and you it's, it's, it's a wash here. Obviously, it's paid off much better here uh, because the entry and no exit yet. Okay. But this is moving fast enough where I think you're better served watching it on the four hour or the hourly. So here's the four hour again. You're in um, the 16th of May. You were out sometime around May 29th, which again is even late because you're missing all this profit here if you're not using stops other than the TK signals. Okay, and then you're back in, based on the four hour, we get a TK cross above the cloud, super strong signal on uh, June 4th, and then it, it, it is where it is now, no no signals here for a close. Got a giant nasty wick here that immediately got bought up. Uh, I don't know if that was <laughs> around the Mark Cuban tweet, but it certainly could have been. Uh, and here's the hourly, which had to get in towards the end of May, and not signaling for an exit yet. You've had one opportunity for re-entry based on the Kijun bounce here, and another based on a tweezer bottom on the Kijun here. One of the strongest re-entry signals you're going to see. The main concern now is double top. Obviously, anytime you get uh, what looks like two tops forming with sort of an M here, okay? So yeah, you get this excellent entry, but you get, you're getting this TK C-clamp and the double top. This is a possibility, a highly unlikely possibility, but... No, this is a batter butterfly. I don't care. I don't care that these aren't exactly what they should be. It should be around 886. It's close enough. Uh, but it would look something like this. So we'd pull back to about 2500 if this is a real double top and then pull back up to 2700. Again, I don't expect this to happen, but it's the trade plan. Should it happen? Uh, another way to draw this would, would, would be to put the first point on uh, this candle here and you'd get an 886 a little higher. All right, so that's Bitcoin. Really not much to say. Buy and hold. Don't panic. Just hold it. Use stops. Be smart. Or don't use stops. Just hold through everything. That's fine. Hold through the UASF. That's why I really haven't done a video. There isn't really much to say. We broke an all-time high again on that candle that we shouldn't have broke. So if you're not in now, get in. That's not trading advice. That's just based on previous trading knowledge. Okay, Ethereum. Uh, this is a pitchfork. I don't really love this pitchfork, but it fits the median line and price really well, as well as uh, the 
top the current all-time high. Uh, one thing you're seeing is definite uh, declining volume on increasing price, so that's a bear div, and declining RSI and increasing price bear div. Uh, I'm an ETH hater, so to keep that in mind, I could be completely wrong with all this, but this pitchfork looks pretty sound. Your buy zone would be this blue uh, quartile here. If we look at Heikinashi and Cloud, on the 4-hour, again, you're seeing uh, declining volume, rising price. There's no bear div on RSI, so you're good there for the most part, uh, depending on how far back you draw the line. And again, your entry, the bullish DK above the cloud, super, super strong bull signal, somewhere around 200, let's say. So you're currently in a 60 buck winning trade, should you be following the cloud. Uh, the previous cloud trade was kind of a wash, depending on stops, again. So one thing you could do if you're in from here, you just move your stops up to the lowest wick, and then currently it's here. And you can see it hasn't gotten past the lowest wick this entire time. So if you're long from 200, your stop on the based on the four hours is somewhere around 250. And I'd be concerned, this is all time high, so should the ratio hold, you know, this will just keep going. But if the ratio falls apart, obviously this will pull back. And if we look at the daily sorry was this the yeah okay four hour that was a four hour usd this is daily usd with cloud again you're getting higher highs and lower volume not necessarily rsi div but this just looks like a mega bull channel i'm not going to try to call the top on this i'm not even going to draw fibs on this but uh, it certainly looks like it's going to keep going here rebuy opportunities i would stick to the four hour tk crosses and uh if you're not in at this point i would wait for the tk cross recross like here or I would put bids at the Kijun. So the daily had you get in somewhere back here based on the Kumo breakout with all the other signals being bullish in mid-February and no exit signal so far based on the TK cross, uh, bearish TK recross. Moving to Ripple, so I was in Ripple at around 111. I was back into Ripple around 111 and it just didn't go anywhere. So I cut it around 101, uh, which is working out considering it's dropped far below that. The Ripple TA is pretty simple. If it doesn't hold this level, it's going to go lower to the next order block. Cloud's kind of helping you out here. It's giving you a line. There wasn't a lot of movement on Ripple other than a few like herky-jerky stuff. So, you know, up, sideways, up. You know, there's more movement here, but in general, here, although there's tons of support down here around the uh, 500, 5,000 sat level. And another thing you'd be looking for is RSI to dip down to oversold. Uh, so if you get oversold and a, a wick touch of the three to 5,000 sat level, that's probably a decent buy. I would never hold whip, Ripple for more than a few days. That's just me. Again, I'm a Ripple hater. Could be wrong. I've been wrong plenty of times. If you go to the four hour, one thing I immediately noticed is this head and shoulders with declining volume. The volume profile kind of rough, but it's there. Another thing to notice, Cloud is definitively bearish here with no hope Currently, uh, you're seeing a failed edge-to-edge -edge trade. You can see how this edge of the cloud held. Always amazes me how the, the, ed the edges of these clouds hold because it draws this 30 periods ahead of time. Bottom line, resistance held, edge-to-edge -edge failed, and you get a bearish TK recross. So that's strong bearish continuation. And right now you're seeing a low time frame uh, descending triangle here on like the 15 minute probably. So expect this to go lower. Uh, you could get a bull div forming based on a lower low in price and a higher low in RSI. I don't think a bull div will even save this. I think it's going to see uh, this order block here. One way to look for order blocks, again, you're just kind of looking at, this one's fairly straightforward based on where price was, just sideways hanging out. And another triangle here, and another low time frame triangle here which was the top previously. So somewhere in here is, it's all fair game. And again, uh, RSI is declining. And there's no div there, but I just thought I'd highlight that. That's all I really have for today. As usual, like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, hit me up on Twitter, Telegram. So I'm mega bullish on Bitcoin. I'm medium to neutral on the ETH BTC ratio as far as bullish bearish. I wouldn't hold it. If you're not already in, I wouldn't get into it until it bottoms a little bit. Uh, I think ETHUSD is going to keep going, but I don't think those gains are going to match Bitcoin's gains. So it'd be smarter just to hold Bitcoin at this point. And I think Ripple's headed for some pain. 
or somewhere between three and five, three and six thousandths that level. So happy trading.